everybody. Welcome to Sketch Club. Jason Meyer here, and my two favorite people uh, have the night off. So they'll be back Sunday evening, so you have to join us there to see their pretty faces. In the meantime, uh, we've got two 10 minutes tonight, a landscape and a still life. And uh, before we start, let's take a quick look at what we're doing. And uh, I'd like to show you around where you can find the reference images to work on your own if you'd like. So why don't we head over to the Procreate on the iPad and take a look at what we've got coming up. All right, so our first one tonight is the landscape. And we started Sunday night talking about the sphere and how we could use that. And uh, what happens is if you're able to see the landscape is very simple instead of complicated, if we can look at those trees and see spheres, then what that enables us to do is to rearrange and resize those very, very easily, which is what you have to do when you're designing when you're designing your work. So little tools, so maybe I'd like that one a little bit bigger and then maybe they could stay connected but that one's smaller and then is maybe just, right? We can play all these little games with these back here. Right? You can see how easy it is to design trees if you want to. So that's the reason you'd want to look at those so simply. And if you've been around, you know that we've been focused on values. So our number four value is going to be found right up here through these. And we talked about how that points us back around and we want to do it in a curve. Then the trees will also be number four values. We can put number four distance on them. Along with those, and oh, nope, those will be number three. Number four, number four, number four. So that's our dark. Number four, dark. You'll see me develop that today, tonight. And then for our number three, gray. What's well, going to play that role? Well, you see, all of this is shadow, isn't it? Notice how that cast shadow really shows the form of the hill. And I go ahead and put all of that as gray as well. So our number three gray value will be found there tonight. And then our number two, which usually refers to our color or our light value. We'll call it light. We're going to do that in the sky. So that'll be the tone of the paper. And then I'm going to use my white or my number one value tonight to highlight the hill in light there. And again, I, well, 15 minutes, five minutes Sunday and 10 minutes tonight. It's not a lot of time, but uh, I would spend more time designing that. But those are the four big pieces in there. And so see if you can organize those tonight and make those beautiful and interesting in the short amount of time that we have. And let's take a look at our still life for the evening. Hello, Susan. Miss Cindy's behind the scenes. She couldn't be here, but like always, she's busy behind the scenes, making sure everything goes. Making sure everything goes. So we talked about our light path in here, starting over here, coming up, highlights, our light grapes, highlight on the dark, light grapes coming through here, 
and then climaxing with all of that light. All right, and little supporting rolls here for maybe a couple of these. And then a value down, right? So a little bit darker. We can have some light in the background as well. And so what do I mean by light in the background? Because it's probably not gonna be a number one or a number two value. If it's number two, it'll be darker. Well, it'll appear light. That will appear light as long as that and that is darker. Okay, so there's a little mind game you can play with to see if you can get this tapestry back here to read as back. And then all of this to read as forward or in front of this. Okay, so there's the challenge for us. The challenge, the challenge for the evening. Let's see, why don't we go here? There we go. There we go. So before we get started on the video though, I'd like to remind everybody, I'd like to remind everybody where they can find all the free goodies. So as always, Sketch Club Live here on jasonmeyer.com. Reference image is a pop-up. Click on that and you'll see this, this week's reference images. Cindy's really good about keeping those updated every Sunday evening, and then they'll run through till they're replaced uh, the following Sunday. So this week, we worked on the sphere, a portrait of Millie, the landscape, and the still life. So if you wanted to work more on your landscape, you could click that, and oh, I want that bigger. Well, click away, click away. Get it as big as you need. Okay, so that's available to you. And let's go back here. And if we go over to teaching, voila, right here. Hit on this link, and that'll lead you to our brand new online school. Been live less than a week. Right now, we have only got one course for sale, but you can preview that course, seven lessons free. So if you're interested, I hope you'll check that out. Um, Check that out. Let's see if I can get that here in the... Oops. There we go. There we go. All right. So now that that's all taken care of, why don't we start sketching? You guys ready? Did you bring all your gear? Okay. Let's get going. So we're up and rolling, as I said, the landscapes first. Let's get you that reference up there. There you go. So I hope you guys remember, you can always find these references on the website, because I know, depending on how large you're, you're looking at that, it might be hard to see that little bitty image in the corner. We got you covered. We have got you covered. So this was the number four value, along with the trees. Good evening, Claudia. Claudia made it. Yes, thank you, Susan. We are, we are running to catch up. And I still, I'm gonna try to send you a little email this, this weekend, I was hoping to talk to you. But uh, man, life's moving a little faster than we are. Life is moving a little faster than we are, but that's all right. We're having a good time, and we will get there eventually. But we're very proud of the new school. It's working out right, and we're hoping to get everything focused around that, even our live classes eventually. 
So you won't have to look here and look there and where are we meeting today? All will be on one online campus. How sweet is that? So to be honest, all I'm doing right now is kind of warming up, trying to get my wits about me. This was done in between about eight different projects. So don't always have the time to kind of think how would I like to organize this. But you take what you get and you use that time and you sketch. Sketch, sketch, sketch. So what I wanna do is I wanna leave some negative shapes in this dark, but before those negative shapes to read, I don't want these really light shapes to be in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and make my gray gray and dark enough that when I lay that dark number four value on top of it, I don't have to go and correct anything. So the reason I jumped back to my number three vine charcoal, I've just got it laid on its side and I'm grinding it in pretty good, was because when I do my number four, this kind of wacky weeds in front here, I don't wanna have any of that light gray in between because that shadow is gonna be that little bit of a darker gray there. And that way I don't have to go try to fill in in between my darks. See how I can just let the darks kind of skip off of that and then we're done. We're done, there's no going back to fix those in-between spots. And uh, one thing you'll discover before too long after you've been sketching is it's harder to have nice variety than you think. I mean, your body almost just does the same thing over and over and over again. So you're always kind of looking at ways and movements that you can make different kinds of marks, different spacing, right? So that it looks interesting. So there I was just getting an idea of what it's gonna look like, but again, we're not drawing in line, I'm drawing in mass. So I want a big mass tone, but having some ideas on those edges out there allow me not to get too blocky and still be interesting as I do get that mass tone filled in. And to the best of our ability, we want that somewhat even, an even tone, not real streaky. And then as it goes back, it's gonna get smaller and less active. And with a little more time, it would get slightly less dark too, and the edges would get light, slightly softer. All of those things would, would say distance. So again, I'm, and I try to go a bit horizontal rather than just a straight diagonal back. That helps things sit on the ground. And then I'm thinking about trees here, and a bunch of them. How can I line them up together to have an interesting rhythm? An interesting rhythm of a dark shape. The ground will be gray, so I lighter touch. But these trees will be dark as well. Now most, at different points in your development as an artist, um, different things are gonna take different amounts of time, all right? Sometimes it just takes forever to, where am I gonna put that horizon line? How big is that tree, How, right? Um, right now, most of my time is spent on placing exactly where things are gonna go, how big they are gonna be. It's the orchestrating the shapes and that happens at the beginning here. So we do these quick things to keep us loose, keep us in shape. If we slow down too much, we'll find that we're producing a, a painting or two every three years. And that's just not fast enough. It's just not fast enough. So sometimes we need a coach out there with the bullhorn. 
Hustle, 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 hustle. Let's go. And that's kind of the whole point of Sketch Club. It's just to kind of put a timer on you. And let's get our muscles warmed up. Keep them warmed up so when we get into painting. So what I'm doing here is I, I think that'll be an interesting shape if I leave that ground and light surrounded by dark. So I'm just designing some dark shapes there where the tree touches the shadow and that'll help lock the viewer in a bit. Your grays, again, kind of even tones. And one of the reasons that the gray near me or the shadow on the ground near me could be a bit lighter than the shadow right underneath the tree back there is because this shadow that we're seeing is thrown from a hillside, which is quite a ways away, which means a lot of skylight still going to get in that shadow. So if anybody was wondering that, there's all these little kind of weird things that happen, right? We introduce these absolute rules and then we say, well, well, in this scenario or in this scenario, in that scenario, because there are these general principles, but most artists like to manipulate things a bit. All right, twist and turn them, see what else we can do with them. So once you understand the general principles, then it's a matter of playing with them and can I break it this way and it still work? Can I twist it this much and it still work? And if the painting's beautiful, if the sketch is beautiful, success. If not, eh, doesn't look like it, not yet. Don't have it figured out quite yet. So in this case, I left the sky, the tone of the paper, or a number two value. And then the hillside, I'm going to put a number one value on. Right, just because that's where I want to focus. And then if you were to paint this in color, there's different ways that we can do that, get that effect. Where we're focusing on the ground and the trees more so than the sky which can be difficult because the sky is generally the lightest thing. And we typically want to look at the lightest thing. And again, not a lot of time, but again, if I can get that a little looking smaller, that'll help with distance. Or you get a little grayer even, a little lighter value. I'm going to come up here and try to just kind of pick out some negative shapes in the grass up front. Well, it's not really grass. To be honest with you, I don't know what it is. It's kind of a tall, dry weed or flower or something that was darker than the surrounding grass. Okay, so we should be finishing up for too long here. Yeah, I think that's it. How did you guys do on this one? How did you do? Oops. All right, so we have got the still life here. And what I've set up is I've set up my darks to kind of hold that light that we were talking about that was going to go through there. So I'll start my drawing today by, again, getting that gray, a little gray and darker on there so that our light will have something to come off of. 
And since this is vine charcoal, it won't get too dark or too heavy. I should be able to, with the eraser, pick that up easily enough to get back to the tone of the paper. But test it out before you use it. Make sure you know what your material does and what it's capable of. All right. How dark can you make your marks before your kneaded eraser can't really take it away, take it back to the tone of the paper? I mean, as artists, we got to know these things. We want to know. Look at that. Busting my vine charcoal. There's hardly any left of that. I'm just grinding it in there. Oh. All right, time to give up on that. And now this is going to be a little darker, heavier as we start on this side. And as it works across, it's going to get a bit lighter. But we do want to hold them in from the top and the bottom as well. If we can get a hold of this light, right? I mean, what's a still life? Well, still life is typically, not always, but typically an interior scene versus a landscape, which is an exterior scene. When you talk about interior versus exterior, what do we think about? All right. Well, inside, kind of housed, we're held. So we can have a little bit more of a complete inside feel if we'll make sure that our light is held inside the borders of our drawing or our painting, whatever we're doing. So all I'm doing now is kind of gradating toward that light movement. And let's pick up the super magical tool here, the stump. What a name, stump. Stump, stump, stump. That's fun to say. And again, I can do this. Well, there's vine charcoal. I did have my compressed charcoal too, but the marks I made with it were very light. There wasn't a lot of pressure. I almost let it let the uh, compressed charcoal almost float across the page. You'll notice with a little experience that the pressure you use with your charcoal is a big deal. And the same with the pressure that I apply to the stump. It's a big deal. It really affects. It really affects how things look. And that's one reason charcoal is another good way to train for painting. Is because painting too is affected by the pressure of your brush on the canvas. Not only that, but the angle you're holding the brush to the canvas. All of that stuff matters. All of that matters. Are you guys doing okay with all my dry technical art talk? I don't have my foil here next to me for uh, entertainment value tonight. And I know I'm not nearly as cute either, but what can I say? You gotta work with what you got. You gotta work with what you got. So here with the eraser, what I'm pulling out now is more the, ah, oh, thanks for the love, guys. Thanks for the love. I'm pulling out in that entire light shape rather than any individual grape or even pear. I, I just, I wanted a movement little reflection on the table there. Ooh, how fancy is that? Who doesn't like a little fanciness? Especially if it can be done quickly and efficiently. That's even better. A quick and efficient fancy. And now my, my eraser is going to be a little bit too big and too clumsy, but I'm still going to try to pull that stem out with the eraser. Right? If I can save my white and not introduce my white for a while, I'm going to be very happy about that because that's going to make me more powerful. Who doesn't want to be powerful? Well, I don't want to be very powerful, but I would like my drawings and paintings to be powerful. Hmm? Powerful, powerful, powerful. 
right? But not in a powerful way that's going to hit you with a bat, but powerful in a poetic way, right? Where you're poetically stunned, poetically stunned into silence. Any of you guys respond to poetry? Man, I think that's just about the best thing in the world. It is a good poem. Second, of course. Second, second, of course, to uh, good painting. But, 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 a good poem? Oof. Count me in. Right, since I didn't have to use that white for the stem or anything, and since this is my most powerful subject, this is what I want to win. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. I want your eye to go to that pair. So I'm going to do everything I can to make that appear brighter. And by taking my number four and making that darker, you see I can get a little more mileage out of my gray and still completely separate my dark from that gray. That gray on the tabletop now looks like light, like the tabletop's lit, now that I have those darks on there. Do you guys notice that? I just lit up that tabletop by making the shadow a darker value. I don't understand most poetry. Susan says, that's awesome. I don't understand most, po most poetry. Well, I guess it depends. I guess it depends on what you're doing. I don't understand a lot of it too, but one reason I love Susan so much is uh, she's a scientist and she has her scientist mind, a great teacher, biologist I believe, works with animals, taught kids, wrote books on genetics, um, yet we've been able to communicate. And I think that's amazing because I think although, you know, I, I don't know Susan that well but I know her well enough to say she's a really good person I feel like I'm a pretty good person but I also see we see the world quite differently that makes it so interesting so when I get students like that it's so fun because I learn as much from them if not more hopefully they learn more from me for their point of view and how they solve these problems and the compositions they come up with So I think seeing things differently is a bonus. I don't think it's a, I think it's a huge bonus, huge bonus. Right? I think poetry is great, but man, if we were all poets, woof, be some probably some cold, hungry humans. Right? Who's gonna build the houses? Who's gonna grow the food? Who's gonna teach the children? Who's going to stop the insects from eating all our crops? <laughs> yeah, that's. I guess that's what I was saying. And that's the thing. These guys say it so much better than I do. We have such a great group. And one of the things that's so great about it is it's just such a wide variety of people. And uh, we all get along and are very supportive. And uh, I don't know. Not everybody. But I know that uh, I need some of that in my life. Makes my days better. Makes my days better. Knowing that each of you are out there. Right? We're each out there taking care of our... What we see. How we see it. Adding what we can to the collective. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I've gone a step further and I'm now tying that dark shape into 
a dark shape on the table. But can you see if I'm not absolutely tying it together, I'm making it so we almost throw it to each other. And this doesn't have to be as obvious as the dark shape of the grapes. There's a spectrum of obvious, or what I sometimes call vagueness, versus clarity, or sp specific. That vague versus specific. See, are we out of time again? Oh yeah, I think we are. Wow, that went fast. So again, I didn't get to finish, I didn't get to do much on the background, but what I did get to do is set up my foreground. And in my foreground, I go from my number four dark to my number one white. Then in my background, I'll probably stay in the values two and the values three to create everything I'm gonna create on that tapestry. And that's how I'll do that. Okay, there it is. How'd you guys do? How did you guys do? You guys in class, I don't know. I, I actually enjoy sketching things several times. And like even when I'm painting things, sketching, I see it differently and it works out different problems. Um, so I hope you guys do too. Why don't we, if you have a chance to put your pencils down, maybe clean your fingers. We'll go through this whole thing in a minute. All 20 minutes in a minute and start to see these patterns. So let's look at this rewind for the night. Remember, this is gonna be our number four value along with our trees. Number three for the shadows on the ground. And I set that number three value up so it could hold the number four value. I'm letting those number four values be a little weaker in the background than they are here in the foreground. The sky is gonna be the tone of the paper, number two. And then the ground, I'm gonna put number white, uh, white. And I can get away with that because here in California, we have golden hills. And if you're looking toward the blue sky away from the sun, those golden hills can be lighter than the sky. And here you see me building that light path. I had to establish the gray so there was a way to get to that light. Then let's reinforce the darks, the number four value. Boom, boom. Dark shape. How can we make that dark shape more interesting? And that's that. That is that. All right, guys, I had a ton of fun. If you don't mind me saying, if I could remind you one more time on, because my beautiful wife has done such a good job of keeping all this up, that on our website, jasonmeyer.com, if you go to Sketch Club Live, you can find reference images right there. Boom, click on those. Those are there, free to use. Also, happy, happy, happy to announce the launch of the online school, Meyer Studio Online Course for Artistic Development. You can come right here and press that. And oops. I guess I pressed something wrong. Here we go. Huh, something's not quite working there. So we'll get that fixed up. Anyway, thank you guys for everything. And uh, that's it for this week. If you're in class, we'll see you tomorrow morning. If not, we hope to see you back here Sunday evening where uh, your, your host will look a little bit better. All right, everybody, good night.